Welcome to Ear Biscuits, I'm Link. And I'm Rhett. This week at the round table of dim lighting, we are exploring the question, what happened to toys? <laughs> and we were just saying, wouldn't that be funny if you just like, you just go up to somebody, a friend, acquaintance, family member. Acquaintance. And you're just like, you know what? I got this nagging question. What, what happened to toys? Because listen, something happened. A lot happened, y'all. Okay. And we're gonna get into it. Um, Possibly. I'm also looking forward to getting into our past lives as children. When we played with toys. When toys were still toys and we played, at least I did. I'm actually curious because I, th- I have some thoughts about you and I'm, I think I'm, I have an idea about Red as a child that I remember that may not even be true. But toys, okay, t- t- toys have changed. It probably isn't true. Toys have changed. But I'm interested. Do in what they it even is. exist anymore? By by my definition, I don't know. Is it is it a long lost thing that we can only experience through nostalgia? Over the course of this podcast, I can't wait. Little reminiscing, a little conjecturing. As always, conjecturing, pulling things directly out of our butts and putting them on the internet uh, and hoping that it will change lives. Yep. One pulled out of our butt at a time, a life has changed. I'm, and I am going to begin holding the microphone like this. Okay. That's my new thing. All right. Because I wanna be able to turn. Loyal listener, I just want you to know that Rhett is now holding and hovering his microphone above the the round table. And I may do a little mini bicep curl. Did you say this week at the round table of dim light? You didn't even say that. You know what? I did say it and I've noticed something and it's been happening more and more often. You may need to go to the doctor. I know what you're talking about. Lately, I we've been saying something and then in the middle of it's it. It's so cliche. You say. Did you just say that? Did you just say that? Yeah. And I definitely did say it. I Maybe it is a problem. I mean, it's it's happening weekly now. I feel like I'm crumbling. <laughs> Definitely emotionally after what happened last night. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm i gonna link the two because I think that. Well, I've never heard you use your name as a verb. I'm still kind of, re- uh, I'm reeling, man. do that more often. And I'm glad you were there to, I, I, I'm ready for well, you to tell me. <laughs> 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 oh, that's so stupid. Yeah, well, I thought that's what we're doing Okay. <laughs> I, I'm still not over what happened, and I'm sorry if you don't want to hear us talk about magic and our interactions with it again. But that's not really what this is about. Yes, what happened last night did happen at a visit to the Magic Castle with our friends, which has become just a regular haunt of ours now. <laughs> <laughs> we got so many people, but I I want to go to the I Magic am Castle honestly reeling and I know it's also funny but I feel like I'm trying, is it better if if I tell the story if you tell the story from your perspective because. Uh, it's probably better if I tell it. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I agree with that. So tell it from your perspective, I'll just try not to interject too much just to clarify what was going on inside my mind at the time. And again, not to shatter the illusion that this is recorded on the, the date that you're hearing it. Uh, for us, we're recording this right around Halloween, uh, which means that we went to. But it's not dated because no one's heard it until right now when right, you're here. Yeah, yeah, I'm not worried about That's it. all that matters. I'm just it's letting fresh. you know. It's fresh and only for you. So at the Magic Castle around Halloween, they have a special thing that they do. It basically, they call it a murder mystery and you can wear, you know, you can dress up, you can wear costumes. And another thing that happens is that the performers uh, the magicians are all in costume as well and in character. They're not just normal magicians. Which is cool. Uh, I will say that we completely ab- is it? abandoned, and never even really started the murder mystery thing. They gave us like a list of clues and you had to go read something. And I was like, ah, this is, I don't wanna think this much at the Magic Castle. So we abandoned that. Apparently I didn't either. But we went to the uh, Close Up Magic Gallery, which is our favorite place. That's the on place Earth. where some, our friend almost got into a fist fight with Jason Sudeikis. Uh, it holds a special place in our hearts. And the guy gets up there and he is pretending to be Sherlock Holmes, putting on a British accent, dressed as Holmes himself, and he begins to go through his act and he's putting and, it all in terms of like solving clues and you know intuition that Sherlock Holmes would have. I would say 
he was good. I would say I, he I was, was good, I yes. would say he was very good. Yeah, I mean, he's a professional magician as far as I could tell. But even the comedic banter, I yeah. thought was a nice aspect of it. Um, and then, of course, for at least half of his act, he requires volunteers from the audience. Now, Link is sitting on the first row in a very small, this place holds like 20 people, so it's very small. And if you listen to the other magic podcast, you know that last time I was standing in the back and I still got made a fool out of. Yeah. I became the butt of the joke and I was happy. I was happy to be that. So, well, he gets to this one trick and um, he says, for this I need a volunteer. And he, <clears throat> you can see there's five people sitting on the front row, Link is one of those. And he kind of looks at the five people and he avoids the people directly in front of him because he had just used those two people, two of our friends, for the previous trick. Mm -hmm. So he's got it, the three people he's choosing from. And he looks at our friend Jenny and she, um, as he looks at her, she's going. <laughs> she's shaking her head. <laughs> Look, kind of looking down. Very, very uh, emphatically saying, "Do not pick me." It's like when a horse makes that <laughs> sound. But I will say she did that motion, silently. But she didn't. <clears throat> make I a will horse say sound. that he looked at you first. Yeah. Now you had also just done something in the previous trick, <clears throat> where somebody had to say when they were going to stop. They said, "When you, say stop when you're compelled to stop," and. She didn't. She never said stop. So I said stop, and I thought that was a funny joke Link, to compel Link her to stop. Grabbed the arm of the volunteer who was a friend of ours and said, "Stop!" I thought it was funny. And then he, you could kind of see that the guy, when he began to figure out who he was going to choose for the next trick, he looked at you and was like, "Not the guy that just interjected himself into this previous trick." He goes over to Jenny. She shakes her head, and then he's kind of at a loss. Is he going to go beyond you out to where Christy was sitting? Mm -hmm. And then he just lands back on you, reluct very reluctantly. <laughs> and as he was picking you, I was thinking inside, "No, no, no, God, d d d don't pick, don't pick him, don't pick him, don't pick him." If it, if this trick, I wasn't wanting to be picked. By the way, if this trick, I wasn't asking requires for requires a person to do things that a normal human being would do in response to a magician. You you've made a mistake. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> you know, again, the 95 out of 100 times that you pick somebody, they're gonna do the thing that the magician wants, and I know that you're in the elite. <laughs> five <laughs> percent, you. I'll call it, uh, of people who are not going to behave normally <laughs> for a number of reasons. <laughs> so the trick was. I don't know the reasons. The trick was he put a cup of colored markers in front of Link. And then- Let's call them Sharpies, and then, not a sponsor. And then gave Link a pad of paper that had three shapes on it, circle, a square, and a rectangle. And he said, sir, what I want you to do is I want you to take one of the markers out of the cup, any color you want, and choose to color any of the shapes that you want. No, no, he didn't say that. He said, I'm gonna turn around and well, yeah. choose a marker, and then he said, "Color the triangle." Oh, he told you which was your marker. He was like, "Pick," but he didn't say the color. color the triangle, any color you want. And then he's he's also facing away from us, and he's coloring now. Right at the very beginning, you picked up a marker and then put it back down and got another marker. And at that point, is that a crime? At that point, I figured. That probably screwed this guy up. <laughs> right, because it's probably based, I don't know how the trick works, but it has something to do with him knowing what you've chosen, and if you don't, if you choose two of them, his whole trick is screwed, right? All I knew was that everybody was watching me pick a marker, so I'm like, oh, I'm like, I'm like fluttering my hand over the marker, and, yeah. with, and then I'm like. Being a little extra. I agree. And then, <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, I'm, am I gonna choose this one? No, and then I let go of it and I chose another one. And then he said, color the triangle, and I did it. And then two more times, did the same thing. And I'm just thinking, I'm just choosing markers, man. Now I will I'm, say- I'm trying to be fun, I'm trying to have silly. I'm trying yep. to have fun and be silly. You're half silly if you want. But I wasn't trying to do, I, I had no ill intent. You were not, you didn't think- Honestly. That the trick hinged on you just grabbing a marker and holding it up. Because you're supposed how, to hold it up. How could it? Uh, and I'll say, because he continued on with the trick, I was like, oh, okay. Maybe he didn't screw it up. Yeah, I did this three times, guys. I picked three different markers and colored the three different shapes. 
And as, then, he, as he continued to color shapes. After all three shapes were colored and the magician had colored his shapes, as he turned around and faced us, I saw a look in his face um, of utter disappointment. He knew that his trick had failed. Busted. And he knew that it was your fault. The funny thing is, I didn't know. By the way, all the all the shapes were colored different colors. <laughs> than mine. And I was still hoping that it was part of the trick. And then he just put it down on the floor. He, and he put like, it on the floor, he said, usually that's very impressive. Yeah, and I was like, <laughs> but he said a few more things and he put it on the floor and then he continues with his act. Yeah. So then at the very end, he did like two more things, they were great. I'm laughing, just having a, having a silly time, balling. And then. Balling. Then I realized, He's done. He's like said his last thing. It's over. He's like telling everybody goodbye. You can stand up. Here's the exit. And I'm and then I say, hold on a second. I know that I didn't that I colored that exactly how you told me to. So I I know I didn't do something wrong. So why don't you show me the show me the picture that you really drew? And then he said, that was it. And at that moment, after everyone else had already long realized this, I realized I blew his trick. It took me that long That's to realize. That's when you realized That's it? when I realized. Because I thought when he's, oh, uh, he's doing the long play. At the very end, he's gonna be like, and you know what? I do have the one that is exactly like his. I had that much faith in the guy. Oh. And I also, mm. because I had no ill intent, I really thought I hadn't screwed up his trick. And then as we're leaving, I'm like, it's really dawning on me and I start turning to everybody in the group and I'm like, I messed up the guy's trick. Yeah. I messed up his trick. And then, as I'm doing that, some person not in our group mm -hmm. storms up to me. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was talking to you at the time. Another patron, a woman. I, she was in some sort of a costume but I couldn't tell you what it was. Go-go mm -hmm. dancer maybe? I don't think so. She put her finger in my face. And what did she say? She said, by the way, sir, not cool. Not cool. She said it again. And then we then talked. she stormed off. We and talked I was to like, our friend. I was like, I, as she was walking off, I was like, I, I didn't mean to. Right, but just to put <laughs> things into perspective, this probably makes sense, but there is a, there is an understanding in the magician's community I don't know what the technical term is for it, but people who know how a trick works, know enough about magic to know how a trick works and when picked to be a volunteer purposely Sabotage. foil the trick yeah, for some own personal gain but, or just to be a troll. And yeah. so lots of people thought that you were a troll and that woman who is a magician's aficionado, obviously, that's what she was dressed as. Oh, okay, yeah. Kinda looked like a fairy, but. And in retrospect, I, I, understand why she did it. Because if you had done it intentionally, it, it was a complete douche thing to do. And especially at the end when I'm like, hold on, hold on, show the picture because I know I drew it yeah, how you told me to. Rubbing it in. And I thought I was giving him an opportunity, I literally, as as stupid as it sounds, I thought I was giving him an opportunity because I thought he was about to, to like blow our minds so, one last and time. And you thought it required you to ask? <laughs> I wasn't, you thought part, you thought part of the was act not, was you, oh, I have to wait for him to ask listen, me to finish the trick. I'm like a child. Well, when I, when I go into the Magic Castle, I'm like a child. That's not untrue. I, with childlike wonder, I experience everything. Oh, I'm picking markers. Which one am I gonna pick? Maybe this one, nope, this one. And that's I'm having why so much fun. I would never choose you as if I was doing a trick. But let me but tell he you. Didn't know, and he honestly, he, did, he tried I not to choose you. I felt so bad after this that I was like, the, per, the, the person who invited us, like the member, I was like, I went up to her, I was like, Her Listen. reputation is on the line. I was like, I am, I wanna let you know that I didn't do it intentionally, I am so sorry. I would, and I, you know, and then a few minutes later, I'm like, you know what, I'd like to talk to the guy. Yeah. If there's any that'll, way I could talk to him and apologize. That'll make it better. I ended up, she, she came and got me a little bit later and I went out there and he was, Sherlock Holmes was standing out there. Mm -hmm. and I was Sad, like, disappointed. Just, yeah. He was apologetic, he's like, you know what, I, the first thing he said was I should have been more clear and I'm like, hold on, no, no, no. And then he starts talking, he's like, when you picked up the marker and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't know how to do your trick. I don't want to know, I just want you to know. I wanna look into your eyes and I wanna say, 
I did not do that on purpose. I'm just an idiot. <laughs> and I'm so sorry. That would be a good I'm t-shirt. So sorry. I did not do that on purpose. I'm, I'm just, just an, an idiot. idiot. <laughs> I earned it, man. I felt horrible. I put my forehead on his shoulder. That's yep. how bad I felt. You did that I've on never purpose. done that to a stranger. I was like, that was a little bit later. I was like, I thought I was gonna start crying on the guy's shoulder. Well, that would have been excessive. I was a, he probably thought I was a total idiot. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't go to sleep. I was thinking about it. Well, you and here's ha- what it was you like. You have a reputation. I was and, like, and our whole I'm group in, has I'm a reputation. I'm now. too impulsive because we were all dressed as the same thing. I, I just, I mean, I, I've experienced a lot of success from just going with it and just being impulsive. But I, I think maybe for the first time, this was a, whoa, buddy, look what you've done now. You've totally shaped. You, I could have shaken the foundations of a magician's career. Unintentionally. You did. You did. Well, but I, it was a small audience. I, I think he could. You know, I think it maybe it's good for him. He, I think he learned a lesson. First of all, go with the instinct to not pick the person that you think is going to foil the trick, and go to the second row. Go beyond the first row. Go to the second. Or row. Or when that happens, you got to have a contingency plan. Yeah, you can't be dead in the water. As soon as you screwed up the trick, my advice would have been: as soon as you screwed up the trick, he should have backed out and said something like. Something I'm getting funny. some bad juju from you. I'm going to use this other person, and then we would, would have been able to see the trick go. But you know what? I but I no nobody intended. And it was, you didn't have bad intentions. You haven't lived life until you know what it feels like to foil a magician's trick unintentionally. It's like being at a comedy club and a stand-up comedian is up there, and you find yourself trying to like, like stand up. I'm going to give you a compliment, and then you you end up like heckling him and decimating him. How is that even possible? I that's, don't think that's I, what I feel like I did. But I don't think I need that in my life. I feel you're like telling I was, me that I haven't lived until I-, I Hey comedian, I think you're great and I wanna do everything I can to support you. Ironically, I'm murdering you right now. That's what I felt like I did. Well don't be so hard on yourself, just don't do it again. I did, <laughs> I do feel like I was making it about me because I was choosing the marker and that was just going on instinct and I don't know if I should back off of that because I've built a whole career on it. Well, I think that. But in that setting. I think the application of it is in the moment where you're supposed to be just behaving like a normal person, I can't do bringing it. the attention onto yourself might be less than desirable for the person who the attention is on. I wasn't. I wasn't even trying to bring the attention I'm to myself. Not, I'm not even Once saying. Once I found that I had the attention, I'm not I was just saying gonna choose a marker. It was completely, it, I'm not saying that you were thinking about it. I'm saying that in order to not do that, you would have to be intentional to be like, okay, I've been chosen as a mark in this thing and now I'm gonna behave as, I sh- as, as a normal human should. Did you notice what I did for the two other acts after that whenever they were choosing people? You looked down. I bowed my head. Well, I that bowed was a, my head. <laughs> that's a good prayer start. That I would not be chosen again. Okay, and then I left early. But we got to talk Couldn't about. Stay. We got to talk about toys. We could talk about the Magic Castle over and over and over again. It, we, we probably ad will. nauseum. <laughs> uh, but we're going to talk about toys. But before that, we are going to let you know that you can outfit yourself. Yes, with the Forest and Farm collection, starting with your head. Look at that. These are the the latest in hat technology. You just stick it. Right on the front, on the front of your head. And you hold it like this. This is of course um, a miniature horse, which is um, one of my loves. And this is a piece of wood, which is one of my loves. We also have shirts and socks that go along with this. So go to mythical.store to pick those up. Of course you can't get Rhett's shirt. Here's the deal, the reason I decided to wear this shirt is not only because I love the color palette, uh, but because I want to show you tangibly. It's an ugly shirt. What it means when we say for a limited time, okay? In fact, almost everything we're doing now is for a limited time. We put it in the store. If you like it, you've got a shot at it because when it sells out, we're moving on, as is the case with this incredible shirt that I'm wearing right now. I'm not even gonna say what it is because then I'd have to say something else. But um, it's really awesome, it's really cool. I, I choose to roll the sleeves up. You can't trigger your own saying of that. Whose freaking phone is that? Oh, that's my computer. What? My wife is wanting to FaceTime with me. And she's in Malaysia, I feel like I should take this. All right, do it. Oh gosh, she's in bed? Dude, you can't. Hey, I'm currently I... podcasting, but I, I really wanted to answer this. 
and tell her that I'm here. Like, keep your covers up. <laughs> it's in. It's early morning in Asia. Okay, should I give her my mic? Bring it over here so that we can mic it. Uh, well, I don't know if I should have this conversation. I think we should have this conversation later. I love you. I love you too. too. Stay right there. <laughs> <laughs> she's. She's. <laughs> okay, I'll call you when I'm done with this. <laughs> You Bye. know what? Let's just let's not do this. You know, you've got a life. This is just our podcast. Uh, okay. That was interesting. You muted it. That's good. I did. Okay, that was a risk, man. Well, that's a relief. This is still the ad, by the way. Oh, that's, see, that's what you get with the video version. Okay. Yeah, still we're the gonna, ad. We're actually gonna splice in footage of that video call. Okay. No, we're not. That's impossible. Let's talk about toys. The other night I was tucking Lando into bed and he was, um, Lincoln wasn't going to bed because I think it was a weekend and he was staying up watching a movie or something a little later but Lando still needed to go to bed but he doesn't like to go to sleep if Lincoln's not in the next room, okay? So I was like, you know what? Okay. I, I will stay in your room as long as you want and hang out with you while you go to sleep. We installed this hammock swing that's like a seat beside his bed. He really wanted one of those. And I just installed him. I was like, I'm gonna sit in this hammock swing. Comes out of the ceiling? It, it, it's attached to the ceiling, yeah. It's a hangy down. In a joist. In a joist, yeah, a, a cross beam. Lando, Lando has an exposed beam in his ceiling, if you must know. Oh. This is what you care about, so how you, sturdily the well, I mean, the story's I, not going to a failed swing. It has nothing to do with okay. that. Okay, well, I, I don't want your life to go to a failed swing. That's why I'm just checking in and making sure. Oh, that thank you. Yeah. I was like, I'm gonna sit in your swing, you're gonna lay in the bed, and we're just gonna talk, you know? <laughs> you know, talk, a mabada mabada, <laughs> like we do. When, we, was... when we speak in, the, uh, speak in the made up language. <laughs> mabada mabada. <laughs> I was trying to say, <laughs> I'm going nuts, man. Yeah, just, yeah. I was gonna say, imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> imagine that, we're just gonna sit here and have a conversation yeah, who does, as family who, members. Who does that? Who um, just talks to each other? Right, I thought it would be refreshing and cool and I didn't have anywhere to be. So I sit in the swing and I'm, he's laying there and we're talking and I'm looking around and I said, Lando, I'm realizing something. There is something that I had a lot more of when I was your age than you have. And of course you know what this is because you already know what this podcast is about because we've already teased it, but he didn't know. So I'm like, can you guess? He's like looking around, he's like, hammock swings? <laughs> I'm like, no son, I, I actually didn't have a hammock swing. You're, Good guess though. Your amazing father mounted this for you because you asked for it, but I didn't have one when I was a kid. He was like, chairs? He was like looking around and seeing stuff, <laughs> which is actually, he should've been doing the opposite, looking around for what he didn't see that I had. Right. And I was like, ultimately, after playing this game for 45 minutes, mm -hmm. <laughs> not that long, I said, toys. He, he eventually guessed Legos, because he has Legos in his room. I was like, not Legos, but broader than that, just toys in general, Lando, when I was eight years old, I had a bunch of toys in my room. That was my thing. But you don't have any, man. You live in a totally different eight-year-old world than the world that I lived in. Your room looks totally different. It's, it's like you're a different, it's like you're, it's like you're on a different planet where toys don't exist, except for Legos and a few odd Nerf Bullets. Planet Mabada Mabada. <laughs> Mabada Mabada Mabada. <laughs> and that, yeah, and you told me this, and I was like, yeah, that's definitely the case. Now, they have, they do have toys, but they don't have the number of different toys. Right, I mean. They may have a lot of, of a couple of things, because I think that's the case with, with my kids. Now, yeah, because I mean, all my kids have Legos. Lando has that. He also has like the the bigger type of Legos called Bionicles. 
that's basically a version of Lego. That you know, he, create men. He has like the, the Bionicle the Legos that are Star Wars. You know, yeah. he has some pop figures because Lillian Lincoln really got into those like over the past few years. So he started getting into that. Did he ever? Did he go through the Duplo stage? Oh yeah, mu- of course, much earlier. You're talking about like yeah. you know, three years old. But it, it's because of screens, and of course, I started taking him through the toys that I play with, and I I'd like for us to do that with each other. <laughs> but it's because of screens, man. They've got games and shows, and at their beck and call at all points. And I was like, that's your problem, Lando. Of course, now his eyes are always like, oh, you're you're attacking my screens. That's what you guys, you and mom are always talking about the screens. But I'm like, when we watch shows, it was, the, the only time kid shows came on was like Saturday morning and then after school for like, like a two hour window. It and was then, not on demand. And then we were just left watching adult shows. You know, like, w- I'd watch reruns of Matlock or like game shows, stuff that was made for adults that like kids could tolerate, you know? Right. On Thursday night, as as probably an eight year old, I guess I'd watch Dukes of Hazard. but then of course I'd have to watch Dallas right after it at my I, grandma's I house. I had to go to bed after Dukes of Hazzard. I had to watch I, a little I specifically Dallas. remember the NBC, dong, 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 at the end of the show and I had to, had to go to bed. But because the screens are so pervasive and any and everything you want. Oh, it's like this show called Fuller House. Lando starts watching that, and then he just binge watches all of it. Well, and they also they they it's the access they have to the number of shows, the number of shows that are you know kind of catered towards them, the fact that they can watch it at any time, and the fact that there's more screens has created this situation where they're all watching things incredibly. Uh, personalized. So mm-hmm. at any given time, everybody in your family is watching something different, right? On their own screen with their headphones on and in their own hammock. And I got it and, and I'm sure because it's so much more <clears throat> it's such more it's a passive experience. Not quite as much with games, but you you're going to gravitate towards that because the it's limitless. It's so easy and it's so enthralling. Because I think at, because as we talk about the toys that we played with, my theory is that we're going to realize why given- Can't just, compete. Y- you just give somebody the option between something they have to apply a lot of imagination to and then something that all the work's been done, just the natural human response is to go towards that thing that's an easier thing, which ultimately could be a bad thing as well. I started to explain to Lando, I was like, Lando, when I was your age, I was in to these action figures called He-Man. It was actually called Masters of the Universe and then the main guy was called He-Man and he was a a muscle bound and I'm talking extremely muscle bound. Like if this was a real person, it would be like a bodybuilder who was six foot one but weighed 800 pounds. Like seriously. Yeah, had very large pecs. He had very large Everything, Everything except for clothes, which he wore fur underwear, and then he carried an axe and a sword, and he had like fur, he wore Uggs, and he walked around in Eternia, and fought a purple guy who had just as much muscle as he did. A matter of fact, he had exactly the same amount of muscles. Same it was, mold. It was the same mold, but his head was a purple hood with a yellow skull in it. Skeletor, man. Skeletor. And also. And it started just, he was like, what? This this is crazy. And he rode a cat, a tiger, that, well first of all, you a gotta green, talk about the fact a that. A green cat with orange stripes called Battle Cat. He was a lot like Superman in that he had a normal non-He-Man persona that was Adam. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Which is a great name for your <laughs> non-super persona. He wore pink and he, he liked to bake. And what was seriously? What, what was the uh, what was the cat's name? Cringer, Cringer, and then Cringer became Battle Cat. Battle Cat, uh, a, a a tiger, a green tiger that had a saddle, and all he did was put a helmet on, right? And that's when he became. Yeah, I don't I don't know what would make him. I can't read that. What's it say? Prince Adam. Prince Adam. Yeah, he was yeah. a prince. Um. It, well, so okay, so you had that. I had the. I had the whole set. I had the castle. I had, oh, you did? Yeah, I had Skeletor's castle, and um, 
because he had it, there was another little guy, like a short ghost. There was like a short ghost guy. Orco. A, yeah. Yeah. I don't remember whose side he was on. He was like an oracle, like it was kind of on both people's side. I don't he, know. He was kind of like the Jar Jar Binks of the of the of Eternia. And it like he was just you looked into inside his face and it was just eyeballs and it was dark. Yeah. Anyway, I had that whole set and spent quite a bit of time playing with it. The, 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 and you had the castle as well? Oh yeah, I had a castle gray skull. I had it at home. I also had one at Nana and Papa's house. Oh, you had a backup. Well, I just, I, you know, it's kinda like when you get old, you have reading glasses everywhere. I, everywhere I went, I had to have another castle gray skull, which it wasn't, it wasn't Skeletor's castle. And you know, this is something I only learned from watching the Netflix documentary, which I'll go ahead and plug it. I wanna make sure I get it right. The toys that made us, if if you're 40 years old, if you're 35 years old, you, now then you're gonna love watching that and hearing all the backstory about it. So I highly recommend it, and that's why it's so fresh in my mind because I've been watching this some of the times with the kids, and they get a kick out of it. Castle Grayskull was who, who whoever whoever had both sides of the sword that Skeletor had one ha one half of the sword, one side of the sword and He-Man had the other side and whoever could get both sides and put them together could then unlock Castle Grayskull and go inside and have the power of, by the power of Grayskull, hmm. you could become amazing. So who lived in Castle Grayskull? Well here's the thing, I actually didn't watch the, uh, the cartoons or read the comics that came with the, the He-Man you I didn't call them. Watch the cartoons. I didn't even watch. I just played with them. I didn't even know the stories. I didn't know what I just told you about combining the swords. I just like collecting these super weird characters like Beast Man or Mecha Neck, a guy whose neck went up, or like. Um, this all from Masters of the Universe. Yeah. Did you have them all like Manny? Many fa Manny faces. I had many faces. You he would twist my, his head, and he would have different faces. Um, okay. So, but just describe to me. Well, let, I'll just quickly say, because uh, I wanna come back to how you played with those, but like, as I was kind of thinking back, the list I made was those action figure sets that were based on properties that existed, TV shows, movies. He-Man is the one that was the first in my mind because it was big, uh, but of course I had G.I. Joe, not to the degree you did. I had the the whole Thundercat set, which was actually my brother's that was handed down to me. Mm -hmm. So all the Thundercats and whatever came with them. Uh, I had a absolute crap ton of Smurfs. What? Because the thing, I when I would go to your house, I think we were older when I started going to your house. I think that's what it was because my theory was you didn't play with many toys because what I remember the first time I went to your house was Posters of basketball players, Michael Jordan, Spud Webb, dunking in your in your bedroom. I don't remember any toys anywhere. Well, by the time. But that, that must have been later. I mean, I definitely, I, I, I'm fairly confident that I stopped playing with them on a regular basis before you did. I mean, I yeah, none of this made it to middle school. Like, not a chance. And sixth I, grade, and definitely didn't make it to sixth grade. The, for me, this is like first grade through fourth grade maybe into fifth grade. Also, the well, way- by the time you turn eight, typically you're getting out of like action figure play type but thing, maybe nine years old. The but. other thing that I think is a little different, and this is evidenced by the way that you treated your uh, WWF action figure set, is that when I had somebody over, I was like, that's not time to play with toys. Like I was like, oh, I've got somebody over, we're going to go outside. Yeah. We're gonna go outside, we're gonna get into something. These toys are for when it's raining <laughs> and I have to be in my room. Last like, resort. It, it, the toys were not something I, it, I was super excited about them initially. I would set them up, but then within seven days, I was missing pieces of it. It was kind of weird and kind of off. And I never like tried to like, I, I did you create like stories with well, them? Because I, I would like play with them a little bit and then I would combine a bunch of them and then I would kind of lose interest and move on to something like else. broom them into a box that you yeah. wouldn't open. Well yeah, knowing, I mean, knowing the you now as well as I do and, and applying that backwards, I would say you probably lost interest whereas I would dig deep. I remember for 
G.I. Joe was the one, and I was telling Lando this too, I was like, it's army men, but they're like fully articulated and posable. And that's when I realized, I, I told him, I was like, you know, I didn't so much as play with my G.I. Joe men as A, collect them, and then I read a lot about, like they also, they had like dossiers and like their, on the back of the packaging, it would like describe all of their, their detailing. But I would, A, I would collect them, and B, I would just, I'd set up a, I would pose them. You know, they had, they could, their, they had a hole in their boot and then they had pegs on all their vehicles. And so you could stand them up and like put them in dynamic poses. And as I was telling Lando this, I realized, you know what, I didn't play with my toys, I created still life. <laughs> like that's what I did, I would, I remember I got the mobile command center, like the biggest thing that G.I. Joe had made. It, like, it opened up like a three-tier tackle box and it was as huge as this table, at least in my memory. And I would take all of my G.I. Joe guys and I would position them all over it and pose them and then once I got it exactly how I wanted it, I'd leave it. And when I came back to it, I would just look at it <laughs> as if I were walking through a museum and someone had created a still life. Yeah, and, if and that's I what ever, I did. If I ever went to the trouble of setting it up, and again, um, I would put, uh, it wasn't like Great Castle Grayskull just had He-Man, it was like, Castle Grayskull could have Smurfs in my world. I think it's hilarious yeah. that you were big into Smurfs. Like, what do you mean? I don't even know what you mean. They like, were little figurines? Non I know what Smurfs are. No, no, the, I'm specifically describing them. They were about this tall, they were rubber, they were three inches tall, four inches They tall. were rubber and um, they were not articulating. They were all stuck in a pose, kind of like the California Raisins. Oh, I collected all those But from Hardee's. But Smurfs had way more than the California Raisins. Do you collect all of them? Uh, I don't remember. But again, for me, it wasn't about collecting. It wasn't like, oh, I've gotta get the Papa Smurf because I don't have the full set. It was about putting them into a situation, and again, this is usually on a rainy day, getting it set up and then just destroying all of it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It was just like, okay, uh, who's the, Lionor. <laughs> Lion, Lion, Lion-O, yeah. Lion-O, <laughs> Lion-Or. <laughs> uh, Lion-O's gonna come through and Thundercat on the Smurfs, whatever that involves, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a thundercat Thunder, can take a thunder thundercat a verb now. can take out twelve Smurfs at a time. Oh gosh! Yeah, Lionel has no problem with Smurfs. Right. Just and uh, it was just both good. Though, it was right? just a hodgepodge. It you didn't a, you didn't even was, stick to like good versus evil. You were like good decimates good. No, in my world, Skeletor and He Man could be buddies. They could team up. They could both ride Cringer at the same time. That was fun. Cringer didn't complain. Battle Cat. I mean, okay, yeah. <laughs> Get it straight. Uh, so. <laughs> And I, my room was way too messy to create any sort of like lasting scene or like set it up. And uh, and of course, my kids are exactly the same way. Like there's not, we'll get into what they have and what they have had, but it's not set up in a way. It's set up in a way to interact with and violently and then destroy at some point and then have to be replaced. Yeah, to me it was just about the scene, the perfect scene that you wouldn't touch. And if, if people came over, like my my younger cousins, like Kurt, one of his first memories is coming over and getting very upset that I wouldn't let him touch anything in my room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's not playing. And like his mom, my aunt, Aunt TZ was like, she thought I was, I mean, she knew I was strange, but at that point she was like, that boy is strange. And um, I, I, I also True. think because I'm an only child and I was like, I was in my room and you know, it was my haven and I had to build these worlds that like then I would just admire and like perfect. You know, I think that's that's the operative word, right? I've gotta get I've gotta perfect the collection, then I can perfect the scene and don't touch it. And this is my this is this is where I'm God. I'm in control. And it felt really good to like have it all together. And I also didn't have like you, an older brother that was like, well, I do this, and if you wanna be cool and, and aspire to be older, then you might wanna do that. So at first, maybe that's a little Thundercat action when he's not looking, you're gonna steal it and decimate your Smurfs. <laughs> but then later it's like, hey man, I'm, I'm kinda done with toys. 
I'm I'm more of like a cool sports dude. So why don't you come outside or we're gonna we're gonna play a game where we hide in the woods in the dark. Be like, uh uh-uh. uh. Count yeah. me out. The yeah, things I mean, that Cole would do we with were, you, we right? Were, we were definitely outside. If you could be outside, we were outside. And I, it wasn't that I didn't go outside, like, but me going outside was an extension of becoming G.I. Joe. I don't know if you remember this, but I had this, I invented this uh, elite group of kids in Harnett County called the Army Investigators. And like I had a trapper keeper that had like a dossier in it and like missions and I drew maps of my neighborhood and I would go out, me and, uh, well I was the only member. <laughs> but then you would come over I and I would take say. you on these missions and I would have like Jimmy, my stepdad at the time, his gift to me would always be stuff from the Army surplus store, which was really cool if you think about it because he took, my 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 love for G.I. Joe and he said, hey, let's bring this into the real world. Not with guns, but with like um, belts and binoculars. Vests. Like the binoculars, vests. Like the binoculars that I that are in the in our book that I still have at home in my bedroom now when I spy on my neighbors. Uh, he gave me those camouflage binoculars and I would take them out into well, the- Well, and I, in, I wasn't a part of that and then we did the same thing, so, <clears throat> I think this is just it shows you what the geography does. The fact that we lived like two miles apart was it might yeah. as well, it's some before we were riding bikes across town to right. see each other, right? So because Jeremy Fisher, who lived on my street, and then my brother Cole and I were the explorers, and we called ourselves the explorers because we had duck boots that were ex- said explorers on them. Okay. And so that, you know how like behind my house there was, the, Bowie's Creek went behind my house and down into the woods and how all those different parts of the creek were named different forts? Like Fort U and Fort um, Dead Man and then Fort Bowie's Creek. No, what are you talking about? Did You didn't know about this? No. Fort Silverstone? I, you made up these names? Jeremy was, so my brother was like three years older and Jeremy was like two years older and then me and then like Peter Dinklage next door, yeah. we're kind of all a part of it. And and you named different points in the Creek Fort, different fort names. Yeah, and then we would go out there. Seeing it was Jeremy Fisher, the older guy, who kinda like. Well yeah, cause I mean you play, you play yeah. with the, all the kids in your neighborhood. So, and then and then later, I would spend a bunch of time out there by myself. I was like, I'm, I gotta go check on Fort Bowie's Creek today. See, the only guys in my neighborhood were those those two twins who lived on the other side of the cat lady, Miss Bolden. Yeah. And um, the, 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 the shoe twins or something. Oh, I can't remember their names. Sounds like a, sounds like a S-C-H-U-E. nursery rhyme. S-C-H-U-E. The shoe twins. Shoe. Lived in a shoe. They were, I, they were older, they were scary, and they rode dirt bikes. Yeah. I'm like, I was yeah, staying stay away. away from those guys. When the army went out investigating, it is to steer clear of the dirt bikes. What, um, else, what else did you play with besides so, Smurfs? Uh, obviously Transformers, I had Transformers. Oh, um, yeah. I, have, I had a lot of Transformers and, too. And tra- to me, Transformers were, they, they're separate from this first group which is like posable because there's a mission with those. Like you change them, they're active. You change them from one thing to another. And they weren't easy. Uh, no, and. Uh, so it's like a puzzle. So I had a bunch of those. Do you my, have Optimus Prime? I, Optimus Prime was my was my favorite thing. I played with him a lot. I had the like the third generation, maybe the second generation. That do you remember the Constructicons? I think is what it's called. It was like construction equipment, like um, bulldozer. They were yellow and purple, and they were bad guys. And they each transformed. The, were they in the Transformers world? Oh yeah, they were. They were um, Decepticons, and they would, but they would all transform into one huge thing, so it was like Voltron. Mm. That was awesome. So you had to collect each one and then when you got all of them, you could create a huge robot. Did you do this successfully? Oh yeah, man. I would have never been capable of that. I posed the hell out of that guy. Before I, before he, he, I, I would set him up and let him lay. Yeah, I mean before I got to, one of them would have broken too significantly before I was able to collect all of them and put them together. Look at the picture, man. Okay, I remember is. that guy. That's um, a lot, I mean, one, two, three, four, five, there's at least six guys in there. And I also had. That's cool, man. Gobots. <laughs> no, you didn't. Yeah, I did. You had you had the cheap 
stepchild of Transformers. Yeah, and they were. Um, they had a cartoon too. Now the interesting thing is, so I was looking these up because I was like, what were those called? That and I just put in Transformers ripoffs, and I got a list of the ten worst Transformers ripoffs. See if you remember any of these because I only remember GoBots. GoBots is number ten, and they were and they were all they. Don't you remember they made the same thing? We're looking at this picture. Oh wow, of, a lot of cars made a man. I just remember that they I were did not. I didn't play in the GoBot world. Man. Very I was loyal, like super simple cars that. Became this other guy. Now, there was also Robo Force. Nope, never, never heard, heard of it. Convertors. <laughs> never heard of it. Zybots. Zybots. Yeah. Stariors. Never like Stariors, like warriors, but with a star. It's a cool name. Roadbots. Roadbots. No. Robotron. Nope. Mysterians. Nope. Rocks and bugs and things. Are you reading an ad now? No, Skip no. Skip it. No, that's it. Oh. Transforming things. Oh. And then rock lords that turn into rocks. Yeah, that's um, that's sadly derivative and just sad. They transforms into a rock. Give me a break. The Transformers were amazing, but the funny thing is I never watched the television show I or, or the movie, and the movie is like a cult classic. The original. Yeah, and they talk about it in the Netflix series. Well, I don't know if I wanna, I, of course I can spoil it, right? Spoiler alert, if you wanna watch the amazing Transformers movie, which I personally still have not seen, then mute right now, because I'm about to say Optimus Prime dies. He dies. You're talking about the one made in the 80s that yeah, was yeah, yeah. like stop motion? Yeah, oh yeah, the animated movie in oh, the animated. 80s. I'm not talking about the Michael Bay. Yeah, film. yeah, yeah, I know that. Um, well, I wanted to I wanted to ask you because I have a theory. Um, so my favorite toys were what I call the subversive category of toys. What? Uh, garbage Pail Kids. Oh, and then Mad Balls. I do not know what a Mad Ball is. Oh, you don't know what a Mad Ball? Mad Balls were probably my favorite toy that I had. And, uh, because garbage pail kids were like baseball cards, but they were, they were demented children who all had like something nasty about them. Yeah, don't you remember these mad balls? They were. Oh, you're talking about like a. It's like a. It's, it's like a cush a, ball, a, but it's. It's like a. Um, it's a monster's head, and my favorite one was the eyeball. It's a smushable ball that you can throw that's like made of like that smushy material but not the stress material that we have today. This it was, was perfect for me because it was a ball. So it was this Super thing Super gross. It was gross and it was like a character but it was also a ball that could be thrown, it could be thrown at Smurfs. <laughs> <laughs> if it can kill a Smurf, <laughs> you could, into you it. You could wipe out you know, a horde of Smurfs with one mad ball. You're like a homicidal maniac with the Smurfs, man. No, no, I'm just was What get, do you got against Smurfs? I was just, get, they're easy targets, man. They're just sitting there looking so happy, they, they need to have their world ruined you from, are like, from time to time. You are Gargamel. You uh, are. I love Gargamel. Yes, you are him. I always incarnate. Co connected but Gargamel's with like, the darker characters. Gargamel's a cat cat guy, though. Well, he's got, he's got his flaws. He's not perfect. But did you have mad, you didn't have mad balls because you didn't know about them, but did you have garbage pail kids? I had garbage pail kids, but I didn't feel good about it. Right, so that that my theory was is that those things that were a little bit, that were darker, yeah, yeah, yeah. you moved away from yeah. and were like, I don't know, that's real trashy. It was twisted, man, it made me feel. But what were you afraid of, what was gonna happen? And we didn't talk about this. The funny thing is is that we were best friends and we yeah. spent a lot of time together, but it was it felt, it you felt... didn't talk about your feelings about garbage pail kids. Yeah, let's get into the finer points about what's your hang up with garbage pail. I mean, I'm surprised that was your friend. If I never went to your house and saw you decimate Smurfs, because that would have been the end. I I, di I didn't. Again, it wasn't that wasn't some, that was something I did on my own. I right, I was a sweet, tender child, and again, it, you've seen me at the Magic Castle. I'm just, I'm just I'm pure, man. But I still mess things up. You know, it's. Like I mean, you look they're, at they're they're back too. By the way, I'm sure Garbage Pail Kids had a like, resurgence. Let me look at Barf and Barbara. <laughs> she's literally vomiting into the thing she's cooking on the stove. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty awesome. They are they're they're so great, you know. And you could have that, and it was. Tell me another one. Tell uh, me another one. We got uh, 
Choking Cooper. <laughs> oh what gosh. The crap? Choking Cooper is being being uh constricted by a large snake. He's dying. Yeah, he's dying. He's being killed by a snake. Vincent Van Gogh. Oh, this is a kid who has cut his own ear off. Just like Vincent Van Gogh. Oh my gosh. Shepard would love this. Sharp Shaw. A what kid the who's crap? ridiculously large teeth have punctured his own face. <laughs> the people who come up with this are the type of people, well they're like you. Big hearted Beverly is hugging two boys so hard that they are suffocating. <laughs> <laughs> that is so wrong, man. Oh, smile and Stan, that's just Stan Lee. Stan Lee was a no, garbage uh, pet? No, pet that's a, that, is, that is a reissue, I believe, or that may just be a Photoshop. Oh yeah, Paris embarrassed. Oh yeah, yeah see, we, we got into these. Yeah, you got into yeah, some. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got into some modern, modern takes. Some memeified garbage bell kids. But like Drippy Debbie. I did have them because a lot of people had them at school, and I felt in order to be cool, I had to at least represent. There's just, there's just for me, there was just something ab about things that were You're exactly right. You know, we were in such a. Um, I mean, just we were in the world of kids, you know, and there are those the, you want to subvert that a little bit just to feel alive. Uh, see, the thing that oh, I gosh. I think the last toys that I ever had were my WWF now WWE, I guess action. Well, they're not action figures; they were not posable. They were like made of they were thick and they were made of rubber and they didn't move. But you could buy the wrestling ring, and I had a lot of those. Yeah, but, and those were very cool, they were very big. And here's the thing, toys back then, I remember I would go to Sky City and I, I put my bridge layer, my G.I. Joe bridge layer on layaway and I'd pay like $4 at a time until I could spend the $30 to, to bring it home. But I'd also go there and buy, whenever I went, I would look to see what wrestlers they had. It was hard to get toys. Like the whole collecting thing, it was very difficult because it was all about local inventory. And they may not have the one you want. Oh yeah, so I never had any good wrestlers. I never had Macho Man, I never had Hulk Hogan. I, I mean, I would just go and be so desperate to get a wrestler, I'd buy a crappy wrestler like Bruno San Martino. What, like, I'm not saying he's a crappy wrestler, but for a guy, I, I mean like, he didn't, I never saw that guy wrestle. He was like a, like, he's an old school wrestler that for some reason, for nostalgia's sake, they made I didn't know who he was, but right. I bought him because I needed to buy a wrestler. There's always like Todd Johnson, like a guy who's just wearing like a singlet. Well, no, they were <laughs> they were all legitimate wrestlers, but yeah, I I never owned Hulk Hogan or Andre the Giant. Really? Wow. Because they didn't exist, and there was no Amazon. So nowadays, I mean, there's a resurgence in all these toys for adults because we want to the the experience I'm having right now is the reason why you can go on eBay and you can buy a Skeletor or a Hulk Hogan. I never got that Hulk Hogan. I'ma get it now, I'ma put it on my desk, man. That kind of thing. You know, there's a booming business of collectibles for that stuff. There's that place in Pasadena, you know, where they have like the glass, um, the glass closets and they've got all the, right. all the, all the collectible stuff in it. But it's not like, yeah, but kid, our kids are not Our kids interested. could get anything they wanted, yet they don't want any of it because it can't compete with the endless supply of digital screenage, man. Well, okay, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the, the toys that weren't screen-based that our kids had because I think that there's a lot of crossover here between our kids. Yeah. Um, and some of these things are in common with what we had, Nerf. We had Nerf. So, but for us, Nerf was, for me, Nerf was mostly just a Nerf football. That was what, what I thought of as Nerf. I didn't have, that I recall, any Nerf guns. But. I, I had, at Nana and Papa's house, we had a bunch of blasters, they call them. Oh, we did have the ones that shot the little suction cups. Mm -hmm. And uh, now the Nerf blasters, I mean, there was a point at which our, I actually. Arsenals. I built a. An arsenal. I built this giant, I got some of that like stuff that you put in your like shop so you can hang up tools. With the holes in it, yeah. With the holes in it and I got, and I built it and put it on Locke's wall so that he could have all his Nerf blasters like just ready for the taking. And he wanted, he and Lincoln wanted to start a channel where they reviewed Nerf guns because that was a thing for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that was something that they, and it was, it was super active, I mean you can, 
yeah. draw your own conclusions or have your own opinions about whether or not it's you know good for kids to have fake guns. But the next thing was uh, Legos. But but they they had a lot of that and it was super active. They 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 all had Legos and we did too. Legos were Legos is like that is amazing how the staying power that they have. Cause, I mean, I think it's through the licensing of like all the all the movies and whatnot. But well, and it, it in my house there still to this day is a just a couple of giant bins yeah. of Legos. At your house there's a bunch of bins of Legos, but they're like meticulously organized. <laughs> like <laughs> no, actually not anymore. Really? Like yeah. I, there's times where I would come over to your house and your kids would like have like every. Color organized in a different bin, and yep. we're like building something. Specific. I passed the disease along, <laughs> but now what we do is, like, Lando's the only one who still plays with him, and he'll we'll lay out a bedspread and we'll dump out the bin on it, and then he'll start playing. But the last time he did that, it broke my heart because when I dumped out the thing in the bottom, there were like eighty five percent complete sets that I remember putting together with Lincoln. I don't know, six years ago. And then they were in the bottom of this bin, just like eroding, and I just I I, I couldn't take it. Uh, but Lando didn't care, and he was just playing with all of them. And we don't really we don't buy anymore. He's eight; he's getting out of it. Right. Well, some people don't. Some people stay on. Uh, Beyblades. So yeah, they play with those. I so, like it was so, that was cool. Like Locke was so into Beyblades. Explain what it is. So basically, it's a. Uh, I don't. I. Th I believe that it may have been a TV show first. I don't think so. It but ended I don't up know. becoming a TV show. Anyway, it is these spinning tops that you you rip. You pull this rip cord to start spinning the tops, and the two Beyblades go into an, are an arena and battle each other. And the first one to stop spinning loses. And like you would get, you you get a collection of Beyblades. He played it with his cousins. Played it with me, you know. That was something that we Lincoln had those, got, yeah. got into a lot. I just remember him as a as like a four year old. Baby, baby, baby. This one he he, yeah, he, yeah, won, yeah. he wanted him so bad. That was a cool toy. Yeah, because it was competition that you had to pull a ripcord at least. You got to work that's out. A, that's a very like eighties style toy. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's completely you know the whole deal is analog and Bay very blades, tangible. Bay blades, let it rip. And uh, they were into that, and then they. And I think uh, Lincoln had the same thing. And, I, and the funny thing is, is like Shepard really didn't care about Beyblades because the difference between a fourteen-year-old and a ten-year-old, even or the thirteen and and eight or nine, is yeah. that our youngest two kids kind of came up with sc screens were a bigger part of their playtime than for our older kids who right. had more of those tangible toys. Yeah. Uh, because we never did, you know. Shepard has Legos, but he did. He doesn't play with them as much as Locke did, and he doesn't have any Beyblades. He played with the Nerf blasters, but not as much as Locke did. Uh, they also had those Spider-Man wrist things that could that that could shoot shoot stuff. But again, like that was, here's the thing: like, yeah, they they had those gimmicky one-off toys, like the modern-day version of the Hulk hands, you put the big Hulk hand over your hand, you smash it together, it's Hulk oh, smash. But that's not a that's not a line of action figures, that's not a robust world of toys that then you could watch a cartoon or a movie about, you know, or create your own. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't a, an immersive type thing. I was trying to search for that, I was like, what, what action figures exist now? I think that's what I Googled. And then Google told me. What'd you learn? Just Marvel movie stuff. I mean, just movie action figures, basically. But it's not a big deal. Like if you walk down the aisle, a toy aisle, you'll see you'll see, you know you'll see Infinity War posable characters. But it's not. It's derivative. You know, it's like it's not the main thing. Of course, the Star Wars toys are still around, so those are action figures now. But, but the, the magic is gone. But man. I, the the action figures them. If it's just an action figure that doesn't do anything, if it doesn't shoot something, if it doesn't light up, if it's not part of some AR experience, then it really uh, beyond collecting. You you you're basically just in the world of collecting things. What? And there's only so many kids yeah. who care about that. And it's I a mean, the, the pristine example of collecting things now are these pop figures, which all of my kids, I, I think Lily and Lincoln are finally getting out of it, but still, and this kind of goes into adulthood, that like 
if you really like a property, you wanna have that thing sitting around. And if you're my kids, you don't wanna take it out of the box. You know, you have the Hawkman pop figure. Somebody sent that to you. I've, actually, I have a bunch of Hawk, Hawkman a bunch of them? figurines, you know, different versions of him that people have sent me. Just but up, up it's, in our office. they want to have a physical representation of their best screen experience. So toys just fills that slot. It's like, what can I have in the real world that represents my jam? But which is the screen world. But they don't spend time posing or, with those, or, or with those doing voices for them, playing. They don't, no, they don't play with I mean, them. They display some kids them. kids out there who are doing it. They display them um, and that's it. Well, and one of the things that kind of ties into this is it's not just about screens because I want to talk. I want to talk about you know how, how we counteract that a little bit mm -hmm. with some of the tangible toys, but it, it it definitely is the death of retail is a big part of this. You know, so obviously this is the year that Toys R Us went under for good, mm -hmm. and um, at least I, do they still have a website? Or is or is it? I don't know, but the retail, all the stores closed. And I would thought I would have thought okay well they closed because of Amazon right they they close they're being impacted in the same way that lots of retail stores are and that's true they're being impacted by online shopping but it wasn't it didn't it didn't follow suit that all the purchases that were taking place in retail moved online because year over year in September Nerf was down thirty percent. Mm -hmm. And this is largely attributed to the death of Toys R Us. Okay, so they still have a website. A website, but because there is something about being in the presence of toys, go, going to you know, we used to go to Brindles. We talked about that. Like, yeah, Brindles was a weird department store that had, for some reason, my dad had decided that Brindles is where we get toys for the boys. And, and uh, lawn care equipment. You get anything there. It was kind of like a Sears. And, um, Sears, but there's something Sears about going, under too. going and seeing it, picking it up, picking it up in the package. That is a completely different experience than just looking at something on the internet. I mean, I, we experienced the beginning of this. I remember going, the, the change. I remember going to Toys R Us and instead of walking down the toy aisle, I would go straight for the Nintendo and Sega aisle. And what they would have is they they had retrofitted aisles that used to have toys on them, and it would have it was flat and it was like laminated cards. You remember this? That it, you would flip up, and you could look at the what would be the front packaging of the video game, and then if you flipped it up, you could read what would be the back of the packaging of the video game. But it wasn't. It was a representation of it where you could read about it in person, and then they had locked cabinets. Where if you got someone, you're like, I want Street Fighter Two. Yes, it cost seventy five dollars in nineteen ninety whatever it was. Wait a minute, late eighties. But I'm gonna get that, and then they pull it out of a glass case and give it to you. Mm -hmm. It was just like it was, it was, it was laminated flappers, and they dedicated a whole long row of Toys R Us for that, and that was that was the beginning of the downfall. It's like, well, yeah, I can I can read flappers on the internet. Once the internet happens, yeah. Um, I, what a, I, I think the operable question is, but what do we do with our kids at this point? You well, know, it's like, I feel like Lily, you know, she's 15, she's basically not a child. Locke's not, a, not, a, not that type of a child. They're not a toy child, they're gone. Yeah, Lincoln's is, gone. It's Land really just Lando and Shepard. I mean, so with Locke, in fact. We failed them. We were, I, I was talking with uh, Locke the other day, you know, he's he's, He's playing basketball. He's he's taking, you know, these difficult courses or whatever. He's got this AP yeah. course, and he he was like, uh, we were talking about Red Dead Redemption Two coming out, uh, and he was like, I I mean, first of all, he didn't play the he didn't play the first one. He he didn't play games that much, but he was like, I'm never gonna play that because I don't play video games. <laughs> he's like, I honestly don't have any time. He's like, I. Do homework, I practice basketball, and I do a f some social stuff. But it's just like there's not a place for video games in my life anymore. Like, and I, I I've been feeling that way for right. 20 years. But and I and he's probably a little exceptional because he's they play so much basketball. Right. Um. Like Lin yeah, Lincoln's big into the games that he plays. 
on but, Xbox. But it's like it's I, I feel like with, with with the older ones it's kinda like, okay, they've they've kind of got their thing. Again, whether they you, play video games or not, they they're kinda on this track, they're gonna do what Once they you're want eight to. or nine, you really don't play with toys but anymore. I, I'm feeling this a lot with Shepard, who's ten, and and right now, as as was evidenced by the uh, the call from my wife in the middle of the podcast, I'm she's out of town. I am taking care of the boys by myself. I don't even know where they're at right now. <laughs> um no, someone's watching them right now. But He Man would know. I am you know, I've got Shepherd and the perfect specimen of muscularity and masculinity. He would know if he were a dad. Locke is is He's uh, sterile though. Is taking um you know, Locke's got all his stuff figured out, but Shepard is like just wants to be on screens, man. He just wants to play vi- play games. Yeah. Roblox is his thing on the computer or be watching something. And I'm like, and I'm like, and he has a limit on each one of those. And I'm like, Shepard, okay, time's up. You have to do something else. And I'm like, go outside. Now, first of all, it's not like it was when we grew up. I can't just say go outside and roam the neighborhood. You, you're basically, you're confined to our yard. But what if we said, yeah, cause Lando, Lando is a similar situation. The different, the thing with Lando though, he's very craft oriented. He's very like inventive and artistic and you know, Basically, that boils down to being obsessed with slime. Like he loves slime because he makes it from scratch, and he like makes all different types, and he like looks at the videos on how to make the different types. And but he also does other art projects as well. And he's so he's he's not as screen oriented, maybe as how you're describing Shepard, but still, he's very much. It's so much easier just to turn to the screen. We have to get him on his projects and like get him all his materials and. Um, mm. but I'm wondering what what if what if we kill two birds with one stone? Go on eBay, start buying all these vintage choi- toys to like restart my collection. I can't believe I sold all my GI Joes in a big cardboard box at a yard sale in my nanny's front yard for like twenty bucks. I sold my entire. I sold them all except for Medic and Gung Ho, my two favorites. I still <laughs> and I still have Medic. I still have both of them. Right. Medic but all the was, other ones in, I got rid of. In the book. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna collect all of them, and I'm gonna say that it's so that Lando can experience toys. But that's really not the truth. But that's a side benefit. We're gonna play together with toys, my toys. I think that's a bad plan. I don't think that's gonna work. Well, I was getting kind of excited about it. Thanks for crapping all over it. Well, I think that you just. I mean, first of all, if if Lando is, can I get He Man really into the? Um, the crafty stuff, you just keep giving him more opportunities to do that. If he can occupy himself with that. But, but you think I think he could get into He Man, She Ra, Tila, Cobra Khan. I don't think he will. I think you I think he might observe you doing it. That would be an interesting study of his father. Okay, Lando, get off the screen. You're gonna watch me play with He Man again. <laughs> play with He Man. I could bring some Smurfs over. <laughs> Red Red's coming over with his Smurf victims. <laughs> Yeah, I could teach your kids how to kill Smurfs. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of let's funny. get out the blowtorch and burn some. Let's get to get, let's have play dates. Just Again, me and you? They're no with the boys. Okay, all right. They're almost too old for this. I'll but bring Lionel. Let's have a play date. Who's the Blue Thundercat? Um, I actually liked him more. He was voiced by the by the dad on Cosby Show. Remember when we found that out a couple of years ago? Oh yeah, by yeah 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 yeah, by Cliff's dad or yeah. by Claire's dad. I think it was Claire's dad was the voice of the the bald. Um, he was more of the tech guy. He was like what, um, Donatello was to the Ninja Turtles. Oh, and I I actually think after wrestlers, by the way, I think Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was the last toys that I actually collected. Mm-hmm. And, I never got and, into them, and those are still around. Um, that, that that's an action figure set and a world that still exists for younger kids, and I think that may be what I'm looking for. Well, I I think what I'm looking for is I was just I was looking at the uh, He Man was nuts though, man. Just lo- if you don't know about these characters, they're all so ridiculous because they were invented from thin air by a toy, a toy company. Here's my theory, and I think you talking about the crafty stuff is what okay. is giving me this theory because. There's like we've done a couple of things like robot kits and yeah. the sciency kit kind of thing. Those are big now. When sh- and Shepard gets into those, 
I, I, it's partly my fault and partly my wife's fault. We're, we're, we don't have, we're not patient. And so if it's just like, can you help me with this? Can you help me make this slime thing happen? If it requires me to step in, I just don't have a lot of patience. Yeah, and I'm just like, just you, do you what I did and just figure it out, man. Yeah, man, you don't, you don't really have to take be a some parent. Smurfs and murder them. Yeah, uh, but in you're, looking, you're, you're, try, you're, you're basically trying to be an '80s parent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. right. Yeah, my parents it's didn't like, pay attention to me. I don't want to pay attention to my kids. Parents nowadays, it, ironically, they are, they are. There is an expectation that parents are supposed to play with the kids. Guys, you're too involved. That didn't happen in the '80s. Let the kids be free. Learn, so it's, l- learn some stuff on their own. Uh, but I'm looking at what the hot in, the the toy insider hot list for 2018. And what I, is it? Well, there. Uh, first of all, I'm going to skip a lot of these because they're just dumb. Now, okay. Shepard has a Nintendo Switch, and there in this Labo stuff, you can make all this crap. But then you're still just, you, you're building a steering wheel and a gas pedal out of cardboard. But then you're playing a video game. Don't let, don't fall for that. Well, okay. They're still playing a screen. But the the time, the crafty time that goes into building that, that's pretty interesting. Well, um, and th- okay. First of all, there's a freaking game you can play with a, your Amazon Alexa called Win in Rome, and Alexa keeps score. That's cool. I read I read about that because people from various regions give um, quizzes from where where they are in their own accents and you play with your family. I, I think board games um, and like family-based or party-based yeah, cool. games, those are still happening. And that's, that's imp- I think that's a very important aspect of toys that still exist and that I'm personally passionate about. But I'm, I'm, I'm getting to the thing, I, along the way I wanna point out a couple of things. Okay. Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Epic Sewer Layer, <laughs> layer Playset. That's bigger than my mobile command set. Uh, this is giant, it's taller than this child. That's very 80s. This child's on his knees, right? Yeah, well, I think you kind of ruined it. Um, it's got a slide and Michelangelo is coming down the slide on a skateboard, it's so pretty awesome. Pizza. So th- that's pretty throwback. But the thing that I saw that I was interested in that looked like a combination of a lot of things okay, was this last one, when I get to it, this. The Thrill Rides Bionic Blast Roller Coaster Building Set. Oh wow! Okay, well, okay. So this has a couple of things, right? It, you, it looks ha- like Tinker Toys. It has the you have the ability to build the roller coaster, and you and put a marble on it. it. No, you put a coaster on it. A no, coaster? No marbles involved, man. Because for for many years there was a marble run thing that you could build like that. Like, but then it's included. Included is a cardboard VR viewer, which I guess you hook up to your, you put your phone in there. <laughs> no, 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 listen, because this gets them in because it's still about screens. Because now they can look at from the perspective of the roller coaster and then you see it and you ride the thing that you just built. I think that the future is can you bring, and that's why it's I- It's like ca- roller coaster tycoon sims that's in real That's why world. I like the Labo stuff because it's based on the fact that they've got this interest already in video games and screens, but it's bringing them out into the real world into some sort of tangible analog experience. Can I have that whenever Shepard's done with it after two days? Well, yeah, we're gonna do it, and then I'm gonna put a bunch of Smurfs on it, and we're gonna run those Smurfs over with the car. So you're gonna teach my life lesson. See, you're gonna eBay Smurfs. I'm thinking about it. You're joking. You're not gonna do the Smurf part. But that's Don't just, get my hopes but up. that's something that, you know, sure, once he builds it and plays with it a few times, eh, we'll bring it to your house, but. And then it won't have all the pieces. But at least next time I'm like, Shepard! Can I use it first? I guarantee you we'll keep all the pieces, then Shepard can have it. He want, it'll be like mint condition. No, no, I mean, you can buy it and give it to me if you wanna do that. I'm not gonna buy it for so, so your family can have it first. <laughs> that's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, well, I might we, get it for your kids as a Christmas present. Since when have you bought my kids a Christmas present? Every year. No, you haven't. Yes, I have. What did you buy them last year? A bunch of Smurfs. <laughs> no, you didn't. No, I get. we get your kids birthday presents. And that's the kind of thing do that we, we get, Hold on, do I give your kids birthday presents? Our wives handle that, man. But yes. They have, they, they, they they have, have feelings. <laughs> they, they care about our kids' futures. You know, we're kind of just along for the ride. 
Not true. We what, care about our kids' futures. Gosh. What is so? What? Uh, all right. Let's go into conclusion zone. I, you're, you're gonna buy Shepard a VR based Tinker Toy set. I, well, I'm gonna go and call it a day. I'm saying that I I'm gonna feel like resurrect I'm gonna, my He-Man collection. No, I'm gonna buy more toys. I'm gonna get more toys for the kids because I actually want to get them toys so they'll get off of screens. And if there's a transitional moment where they have to use toys that also use screens, then you, so be it. You're not just for Shepard. Locks. He, what, He's gone. I Whatever I screwed up with Locke is done. Right. You know what I'm saying? His personality yeah, is too, set. Man. The trauma is locked in. You know, he is who he's gonna be. Right, but those younger, Shepard and Shepard, they're Shepard gonna- Shepard a couple more years they're gonna have of malleability. Some, some muscular It's really the a, ages three through five that you have to worry about, and that's over for us. We've blown it. I wish I had read a book about parenting. Oh gosh. I miss toys, man. I just want, I wanna be a child. This is not about my kids. Who am I kidding? What happened to toys? That was the question that we were answering. They're done, they be, they're over. They became digital, man. They went on a they screen. They are gone. Yeah. And With now, rare exception. It's just for weird people who go to hobby I, shops. I love, old, I love family board games. I love tabletop games and I love party games. Those are an exception. It's not what we've been talking about. But the, the quintessential action figure world is is gone, and I mourn it. We'll speak at you again next week. Thanks for hanging out with us, and let us know hashtag Ear Biscuits what toy you were obsessed with, and what toys kid. your kids are playing with right now. Maybe, maybe there's something that we should be getting for our kids who is still of the toy age, and you can you can tell us what we should get them. Yeah, let's do it. We'll talk at you next week because we love you so much. <laughs>